Hey guys, welcome back. So today is gonna be about this technique I've been trying to figure out for a really long time and I finally got it. So it all started when I saw this brand film from Citric. A motion designer posted it on Instagram and I was in love at the start because all the animations were so great and particularly there was this block that was made out of other small blocks and these small blocks were coming together in like a robot fashion and forming the bigger block. So I tried to make this effect for such a long time and I finally got it today. So I really wanted to show it to you guys and I've already posted it on my Instagram. So if you haven't seen it, then please, the link is below. And let's just get into how to get this effect in Cinema 4D. So we're gonna do two effects today and we're first of all gonna do the standard one and then we're gonna do my one. So the standard one is the one from the Citric brand film and my version is a little bit more fun where we get to play with some dynamics and hopefully you guys can take it to another level with your ideas and creative projects. So let me just show you how to do the standard one. First. So for the first technique, we're just gonna start off by animating a cube. And we're gonna take a cube up here on the primitives. And then we're actually going in the right view. We're gonna draw a spline with the spline pin tool. All right, so we are going to set a point in the middle approximately then draw out a spline in the pattern you want i'm gonna have mine do this just some some random bends and stuff then i'm gonna take some of the bends and i'm just gonna select them and transfer them over so if we jump into this view we can transfer them here and we can take this little one we can move it out all right so now we have a little spline sequence if you can call it that let's just tidy it up a bit so we have our end spline is gonna be here. I think I'm just gonna move this down so it matches. Alrighty. And we can probably move this a bit out, move that a bit out. And down here we can also move this bit out all right so now we got something usable so let's control a to select all all the points in the point mode then u s for subdividing and press u s for subdividing again then we're gonna go into our spline on the type set it to cubic or oh, not cubic B spline <laughs> yeah <laughs> so now we got some nice bends on it so let me just make a hierarchy first so let's select these press alt G to group them let's call it object and let's alt G again to group them and let's call it setup all right so we're gonna move the spline out into the setup and we are going to take a spline effector under the effector tab up here. 
So let's put the spline effect here down under the object and let's go and look under the spline input here let's take our spline and put it right in there all right so nothing happened that's because we need to go under the deformer and set the deformer to object so now when we go back we can use this offset to animate our cube along the spline so let's go to the start here let's set a keyframe at 100 percent then go to frame 30 or something let's set a keyframe at zero so now we got this quick animation let's probably move it out to 60 frames so we get a little bit nicer and now the fun part comes we're gonna go up here to our timeline let's go into the f curve let's select this point and let's press this button all right so let's select this one and lock the tangent angles and move it a bit out so we got a nice curve on this and i can already see we need to move it a little bit less so as you can see the cube is slowing down when it gets to the final point. So now we actually have the whole setup. The only thing left to do, or not the only thing, but now we just need to clone it out in a cube. So let's select a cloner. Let's put the setup inside of the cloner. And now we got this problem. So First of all, before I make the animation a little bit more random, we're gonna go inside of our cloner. We're gonna set the step length to 205 in each direction. So there's a bit of a gap between all the blocks. So let's set the count to three in all directions. So we got a kind of like a Rubik's cube. And let's go and find a formula effector so the formula effector we're going to use to rotate all of these splines in 90 degree angles so how do you do that well first of all you delete the formula and then you go into the parameters deselect the scale the position select the rotation and then we'll give it 90 in the h rotation then we're going to go to our formula. So we are going to type round parentheses R in D semicolon 100 close brackets. All right. So I have also linked this in the description below. So you can just copy and paste it in. But look what happened when we typed that in. We got our 90 degree angles and if you only want it in two directions you can change this to 180 and then it will only be in two directions all right you can also go the other way let's say 45 but then the cubes aren't gonna line up well oh they actually are well you can also do that for a bit more randomness all right so let's just set it to 90 and let me just go and hide the spline so now you can see when we play it it's these chunks that's getting together and making the cube and we don't want that we want the different small cubes to make the bigger cube all right so how do we do that well we have an animation so it's really simple we can just go into a formula go under parameters and there's a time offset. You can set it to two frames or three frames or whatever you like, but I'm gonna set mine to two frames. So as you can see, the cubes are slowly making up the bigger Rubik's cube. And we can just extend our timeline, let's say 400 frames. And all the cubes are eventually gonna build this nice Rubik's cube. So this was the standard one. 
And now let me show you how you can spice things up with some dynamics. So here in the new scene, we are going to do exactly the same thing. I've just copied over the spline we had from before. I'm just going to show it to you. It's this spline. And this time I'm going to make a cylinder and I'm going to make it 20 centimeters high. And we are going to make it 64 in the rotation segments. All right. So we're just going to make the same setup as before. So group the object and group the whole thing together and call it the setup. You can call this the object folder. Here we have the same setup as before. So let me just pull in the same spline deformer, the same spline effector. And let's set the spline into the spline channel. Let's set the deformer to object. And let's animate it from 100% to 0%. All right. For this one, we're not gonna mess around with any curves. And as you can see, the cylinder is actually moving a bit weird on the axis. So I'm just gonna say it has a up vector in this parameter here. And I don't know which parameter it actually is. It's different every time but I think it's this one, yeah. So as you can see, it has a different up vector. And it was probably fine before, actually. Let me just set it back to zero. And let's make it a bit bigger in the radius. So let's make it 200 and let's make it, oh not 200, let's make it 100 and Let's make it 40 in the height. All right, that should be good. So now comes the fun stuff. We're gonna put it into a cloner again. And this time we're gonna set it to linear. So we don't have a grid. All right. So when we bring it down here to the end point of the animation, we are going to set it to zero in the Y position and set it to 10 in the X position or 50, sorry, <laughs> 50 in the X position. And as you can see, we can make a whole lot of these. And now we just need our formula again because we want to randomize them. So let's select the cloner, go up here and select the formula, delete all the formula, type in round, bracket, R&D, semicolon, 100, bracket. And let's go into the parameter, delete the scale, delete the position, put some rotation on the H axis. And we're gonna type 90 again. So as you can see, all the coins are falling into the place and stacking up. And like last time, we're gonna set a time offset of two frames. And we're gonna extend our timeline. So we can actually see what's going on. Right, let's hide the spline again. We don't need that right now. And now we have the same exact animation as before, just with a different layout. So let's make it a bit more fun. Let's stop this animation and let's go to our cylinder. Let's right click on it, say simulation tags, rigid body, and let's go to the force tab. Set, I found out that a 10 in follow position and 50 in follow rotation was very good. And then we're gonna press Control D to bring up our project settings. Let's go to dynamics. Let's delete all of the gravity. All right. So let me just show you 
how it looks when there's dynamics involved. So as you can see, things are bumping into each other and making these really cool effects. And we can even make it a little bit more nice when we add loads more particles or objects. So as you can see, they're bumping into each other and having a great party time. <laughs> so now it's up to you to find the right setting for this technique. So I really hope you like this technique because it took me a long time to figure out and it is really easy actually. So you can use this in so many different projects and it's a really good tool to have in your toolkit. So if you have enjoyed this video and want to see more, then please subscribe because it really helps me out making these videos. And give it a like, because then I know you really like the tutorial. So I've actually made a Discord server for all you people out there, so you can chat with each other and help each other with new projects. And I'm also gonna be doing loads more of live streaming, so you can join the Discord and get a notification when I live stream. All right, I think that was it. And I'm really looking forward to seeing your renders out there. So the only thing left to say is just stay creative.